Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to be working with them Heliamphoras. They're a type of carnivorous plant and we are going to try to pollinate a flower. So it is a little bit of a difficult technique, more so than some other plants. And um, you can see before you all my Heliamphoras. And if I turn this way, we will get the flower in focus here. So that is a Heliamphora flower. It's been open for one day now. It was fully open like this yesterday, and so today is sort of the second day it's open. Now, in order to know how to pollinate a Heliamphora, you have to know a few things about these guys first. So, they are se sequential bloomers. So this is the first one on the spike. Here's a spike. There's this little sheath that the flower came out of, and you can already see the next bud there as well. So, when this flower first opens, it is receptive to pollen for a few days and the pollen goes on the stigma of the plant. Now, I don't have a whole lot of flower knowledge, so stigma and anthers are my um, about as far as my expertise go. So the pollen goes on the stigma just like any other flower, except for there is no pollen available until after the stigma is no longer receptive which means the first flower on the Heliamphora cannot be pollinated by its own pollen. After this one is no longer receptive, it's going to let loose its pollen, and then the next one can be pollinated by that. Pollen is a little bit tricky to get out of these guys, so we're going to do this video in a few stages. So first off, let's just have a look at the flower. And you guys are going to kill me for this, but I'm going to do this for the name of science, just so you guys can see in here a little bit better. It makes it much easier to work too. So I took off the little sheath there. Now you can see a little bit more of the flower. Let's see how easy it is. These flowers, sometimes they orientate nice and they're easy to work with, other times they're not. So we're gonna bend this up. We have to expose the little bits there that we're looking for. They are very far up in. All right. So, there is a good view here. You can see the stigma is right down there, and the anthers up there, that's where the pollen is going to be. So we need to get pollen on this little piece right here. And what I'm going to do is just remove this petal altogether. And I am likely going to remove this petal as well, because it's going to make filming and um, doing this work much, much easier. So, we're going to leave it like this, and let's get a good view of the flower now that we can see all the parts. There we go, so we can see what we're working with there. And what we have to do next is get some pollen. So I can't get it from this flower because it hasn't produced pollen yet. These things will go kind of a yellowy color when you can. So let me adjust the camera. We're going to have to go to a different flower and we're going to have to get some pollen. Okay, it took some real maneuvering to get this guy in focus because it's just so bright in here. I hung a towel behind the plant and so we just have the anthers and the stigma left. All the petals have been removed so you can see this easily. And if you look really close at the stigma, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, but it's actually got a black dot on the end. It's not white anymore which means this one is hopefully pollinated. Unpollinated stigmas are still the same color as the actual stigma itself, that sort of creamy tan color. All right, and I want this in perfect focus if I can. We need two tools for this. One is a glass jar to catch the pollen, just like so, mine's a little bit overkill. The other is a tuning fork, because in the wild, these guys get pollinated by insects like bees. And it's actually, the pollen is inside these little sacs here. And in order to release it, you need to get a frequency of the bee's wings sort of beating next to it or on it. And it's going to release the pollen. So what I'm going to do is tap my tuning fork, put this underneath and touch it to it. And hopefully you will get a shot and you'll be able to see the pollen. These plants have very, very tiny amounts of pollen. But this will still give you an idea of what it's going to look like, even if you can't see the pollen. Not sure if you're able to see that or not. Yep, 
And so the tiniest little bits of pollen is falling out of this. All the fans have been turned off in the greenhouse. And I am just using the tuning fork to vibrate these little pollen sacks on the anthers. And I can see little bits of pollen falling out. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to on camera or not. It is a minute amount. That was actually a lot there. I'm not sure if that's going to show up or not. I sure hope so. By a lot, it was just a minuscule puff of white or yellow. So that is how we um, get the pollen out. And I've now bumped it. This is very shaky work with um, the camera really zoomed in. So that is all I'm going to do for there for now. And that is how we retrieve pollen. Now let's go back to the main flower. Okay, back to the main flower. So hopefully this is going to pollinate today. If it doesn't, I need to try again tomorrow. And ideally you want to try twice a day, every day, until you see the um, stigma has gone black. And then I even do it another day or so after that. So I'm going to try to point this up so you can see the color of the stigma now. It is the exact same color all the way along and down. And what I'm going to do, I have been collecting pollen for a while in here. So you'll be able to see pollen in the bottom of that jar. I collect with every flower that opens, I collect the pollen. And so that's what I've got. You can see even some marks from the paintbrush from other um, flower pollinations. So this is all helium for a minor pollen. I'm just opening the jar off camera. I have got my paintbrush here for pollinating. I actually took a razor blade and cut about half the bristles off of it. And then I actually took, it was white bristles. Then I took a jiffy marker and a permanent jiffy marker and painted the, the bristles black so I could see them. In a perfect world, just grab yourself a black paintbrush. So we will dip it in. See if we can um, get a shot of this. You're more likely just going to see the marks on the bottom of the the jar sort of thing. I'm just going to dip it, touch a little bit. Just touching a little bit there. Now I can see it on the end of the paintbrush. See just that little white mark there. I'm not sure if that's going to focus, but that's not too important. So, now all we are going to do is touch the end of the stigma with the paintbrush with the pollen on. And hopefully we'll get that pollinated today. And if it is successfully pollinated, and if it is successfully pollinated, the stigma will turn black. So let's just give it a minute there. I'm going to put the, the lid back on the jar. Hopefully um, you've seen what I was doing. I've got it so zoomed in, I'm working within like uh, one square inch of range here in order to get the shot. So let's have a look now at the stigma. And I can see that there is a slightest bit of color starting on this stigma now. And I bet you if we came back in 10 minutes or so, that would be totally pollinated. I'm just going to go for another dip in here of pollen. Get my brush really covered and do it one more time for good luck. Let's get you in focus if I can. There we go. Ever so delicately. You're just painting the end of the stigma there. Now I can see it already. This has been a successful pollination. The stigma has turned black. But I don't know if you'll be able to really see it on camera. But it has gone dark there. You can see it more almost from the side view. So anyways, let's zoom you back out because that's like max zoomed in. And that is how we successfully pollinate a helium for a flower. So I hope you like this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.